by the end of this video series, I'm going to show you guys exactly how you can become Van Dyke in terms of his speed, his agility, his strength, his vertical jump, and just overall athleticism. Now this one is going to be part one, and this is specifically going to be going over his strength. And before we start this video, you're probably wondering, why should I trust you? And first of all, my name is Matt Stigler. I'm a pro footballer performance coach, and I've coached thousands of footballers over the past 10 years and have helped them improve their strength, not just in the gym, but on the pitch. And I've made sure that this strength progress that they have got has helped them get to the next level. For some of them, that's from getting on a better team for their high school. And for some of them, that's actually improving their performance on the professional level. Whatever it means for you, that's what I'm here to do. Now, before some of you guys go, complain about genetics and complain about the fact that you aren't built like Van Dyke, please listen to me for a second. No, if you are five foot nine, I cannot actually make you six foot two like Van Dyke or however tall he is. Do genetics play a role in terms of your physical performance? 100%. But through this video, I can make you your own version of Van Dyke. And the amount of footballers that I have worked with that have come to me and they have just absolutely underestimated their athleticism, specifically in things like strength and speed, it happens all the time. But you guys, if you train on a proper program for months and years, you can develop pro level strength and athleticism. So by the end of this video, I'm gonna give you two different ways that you can get as strong as Van Dyke. The funniest thing to me is when people say, oh, you don't need to be strong for football. Insert X example of some skinny footballer. Try telling that to Van Dyke and try telling that to the footballers that have to go up against Van Dyke and have nightmares about him the day before a match. I know people are scared of getting bulky, they're scared of getting slow, but look at that guy. That guy is one of the most athletic footballers in the Premier League. And I'm gonna teach you how to do the same. So the first way that you can get as strong as Van Dyke is going to be by using something called APRE, which stands for Auto Regulatory Progressive Resistance Exercise. And APRE is really great because RPE, Rate of Perceived Exertion, focuses too much on how you feel, Percent-based lifting, while I do do it and I utilize it often for people, it's very set in stone and it's not terribly adaptable to how you're doing and how you have recovered on the day. So I have found the best benefit of doing APRE and percent-based lifting so that you never plateau. Now, there are a bunch of different APRE protocols and what I often do with my footballers is I'll do one for about a month and then I'll go into the heavier one for the next month and then I'll go into the heavier one for the third month. So an easy example of this is the 10 rep max protocol. And this is where for your first set, you do 10 reps at 50% of your estimated 10 rep max. For math's sake today, let's say that's 200 pounds. So you would do a set of 10, you would do it at 100 pounds, and that wouldn't be too difficult of a set. The first two sets are really warm-ups. Then the next set, your next warm-up set, you're going to do 75% of your 10 rep max, and you are going to do that for 10 reps. So in this case, that is gonna be 150 pounds. It's getting a little bit harder, but still shouldn't really be approaching any level of significant fatigue. Now for the working sets. You will then on your third set, do as many reps as you possibly can of 100% of your estimated 10 rep max. So in this case, that would be 200 pounds. You would see how many reps you can get of that. Then on your fourth set, you will decide the weight of that fourth set based on what happened in the third set. So if you got four to seven reps, you'll either keep the same weight or you will lower it zero to three kilograms. So it wouldn't be anything significant, but for the fourth set, you'd probably do anywhere between 200 to 195 pounds. If you got anywhere between eight to 12 reps on the third set, you would keep the same weight on the bar. If you got 13 to 17 reps, you would add three to seven kilograms for your fourth set. So that means on your fourth set, you would do somewhere around 205 to 215 pounds. And if you got 17 or more reps, first of all, you absolutely crushed it, but you would then add five to seven kilograms to the bar. So you'd be doing 215 to 220 ish pounds, if my math is correct off the top of my head. So then no matter what weight you added on to the bar for that fourth set, you will then do as many reps as you possibly can again. I know that this sounds confusing. You don't have to memorize this. Just save this video so that you can utilize this chart whenever you are going to the gym and you are utilizing these same protocols. Now, the second way that you can get as strong as Van Dyke is descending pyramids. Descending pyramids are especially good if you are transitioning from a accumulation phase to a intensification or strength phase. And the reason for this is because accumulation phases are often higher rep and lower weight. So if you just went from four sets of 12 at 70% and you opt right into like 
five sets of three at 85 to 90 percent. It's a huge jump out of nowhere and one your training will suffer it will take many weeks for you to actually adjust to that heavier weight but two you are running a higher risk of injury. So what actually are descending pyramids? This is where you start with higher rep sets and as the sets go on you lower the amount of reps you're doing and increase the weight. So maybe you do a set of 12 at 70 percent of your one rep max then the next set for set number two you're going to a set of 10 for 72 and a half to 75 percent of your one rep max then you go to a set of eight for maybe up to 80 percent of your one rep max then you go down to six for 80 to 85 percent these are all just kind of examples and it's going to really depend on how used to an accumulation versus a intensification phase you are but you get the point point. and over the weeks and months you'll do the same thing but maybe during week one of that session you do what i just outlined and then week two maybe you start at 10 reps and then you actually get down to four reps on your final set and then week three you can do eight reps and you can get down to three reps and so on and so on now for a quick added bonus for those of you that have stayed until the very end so if you want to be an absolute weapon on the pitch so much so that every time the opposing team gets off the team bus they're absolutely terrified you need to be doing ascending pyramid strength training this is where you go from lower rep higher weight sets and as the sets go on you increase the reps and decrease the weight this is really beneficial for people who are going from a intensification phase into a accumulation phase because again going from five sets of two into like three sets of 15 is just such a huge shock to the system it's not beneficial for your training and you run a greater risk of injury so to progress this you can you can start by doing three reps and then by the final set of that individual session you can get up to eight and then the next week when you're doing that same session with that same lift you can start at four to five reps and you can get out to 10 and so on and so on until you're hitting 12 you're hitting 15 and then eventually you're just already in your accumulation phase guys i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you got something from it if you did make sure to like maybe give it a little subscription but until next time i'll see you guys later